Um, okay, so uh, I'm Penny, I'm from Bangor University, that's the furthest north university in Wales, and Wales is the, the bit that sticks out on the western side of the, the map of the UK. Um, I'm going to talk about Bangor initially, then a little bit about our KESS project. KESS stands for Knowledge, Economy, Skills, Scholarships, and that's a pan-Wales project, so it encompasses all ten of the universities in Wales. Um, I've got the ESF logo on here, so you can, you can probably guess that that's an ESF-funded project. So unlike Bent, you said there's not a lot of paperwork and bureaucracy, we're drowning in it. So this is me, um, Penny. I, um, my background is, is in education, that's my discipline. Um, I consider myself to be an educational developer. My doctoral research was in uh, cultural adaptation, so the study of how people adapt to different academic cultures and different cultures as they move from country to country. Within my university, I'm a manager of our newly established doctoral school, so that embraces all of the um, doctoral candidates across the whole university, all disciplines. And we look at training, but also governance uh, sits with us. And we pull together all the funded projects for doctoral study into one place. So it's really the first time that we've had a complete overview of that, and that we can make sense of doctoral training and see how it all fits together. Um, I was given that job fairly recently, and I was given it on the strength of the KESS project. So I project manage the, this uh, KESS um, ESF funded project. We lead it on behalf of the whole of Wales. And to give you an idea of scope, it's about 400 to 420 fully funded uh, doctoral scholarships over a period of five years. Um, for my sins, I also project manager another ESF project, that's ATM, which is Access to Masters. So those are taught masters projects. Uh, Bangor University doesn't lead on that project, Swansea University leads, but we are a partner in another Pan Wales project. So we've kind of got a quite nice uh, continuum here, from taught masters to research masters to doctoral right the way through. And the KESS project sits firmly within our doctoral school. So a little bit about my university. This is a, um, a picture. You can see it's a very traditional university sitting on the top of the hill in North Wales. It was actually founded uh, by the local industry. So we have a very strong slate industry in Bangor. And it was the workers who founded our university back in 1884. It's a little bit different now. We have a very big new building that sits in front of this one on the hill. Um, still got scaffolding on it, but it's nearly finished. We have 16,000, 17,000 students. Of those, around 2,000 are postgraduates. And our university is structured within five colleges with 23 academic schools. In terms of research excellence, we've just been through a research excellence um, exercise, a national one. Um, top of our performance list are accounting and finance, electronic engineering, sport and exercise science, which embraces uh, both physiology and psychology, the school of psychology, and ocean marine sciences. Um, kind of things that we need to highlight about our university for research in psychology, we have an MRI scanner. For marine ocean sciences, we have a, a research vessel. So we sometimes have meetings on that, <laughs> bobbing up and down on the water. And we have a new arts and innovation centre that's about to, to open up. And I think for our area and our local community, that's a very important investment. A little bit about KESS now, our um, ESF project. It's, uh, it's divided into two main parts. We have what we call KESS minis, those research masters, and then the maxis, which are PhDs. 
Because I spent many years doing um, doctoral training, uh, when we designed the KESS project, I insisted that it had to have a training element in it. So every KESS scholar has to complete a compulsory postgraduate skills award. So that's kind of giving them the business awareness of the business training skills that they need to engage with their partner companies. We launched in 2009, and the leads. Um, and it's it's a fairly unique way in the way it uses ESF uh, funding to support higher level skills development. And currently we're going under an uh, undergoing an independent evaluation because we're looking at a successor project. So we're just coming to the end of the five years now. It's worth um, 39 million euros. Uh, those are total project costs, so as project managers, I some, as a project manager I sometimes have sleepless nights <laughs> thinking, you know, can we, have we made a good job of that massive investment? Um, numbers are looking, 220 PhDs and 200 master's projects, that's our final, our final figure. It's the first project that's brought together all of the nine universities across Wales. And all of the projects link with uh, a company partner. So they're collaborative with um, micro companies, SMEs, large companies, third and public sector organisations. All of those are eligible um, project partners. Uh, when we look at the figures, we're actually 60% of our company partners are SMEs, which is a reflection of the area in, in which we live, really. Fairly low cost for company partners. Um, 2.9k in euros per annum. And um, the Welsh Government, of course, they dictate how that money is, is being invested. It's invested for economic regeneration of our area. So we have to fit our projects within their priority sectors. So that's low carbon economy, digital economy, health and bioscience, advanced manufacturing and engineering. And most of our projects are sitting within health and bioscience, actually the majority are there. Um, important point about IP, with all of these projects, the company sign a contract stating that the IP is retained by the university. And that, that causes a few issues. Uh, Bent talked about publica publications, encouraging free publication. But we hit some problems with um, commercially sensitive information and how that's published and uh, branded. So I think for our successive project, that's something we're going to be looking at. These are our nine partners, nine universities across Wales. Uh, Cardiff is our capital city. Um, Glyndwr is our neighbour. And most of the others are in the south of Wales, with the exception of Aberystwyth, which is in mid Wales. These are our project objectives, this is what we set out to do. So we're looking at researchers as professional people. We're looking at increasing research capacity of small and medium enterprises within our area and linking together uh, research, so it's R&D within the company. We're looking at trying to encourage companies to recruit doctoral candidates looking at supporting development in uh, technology and, of course, promoting higher level skills. This is where we sit in terms of the European Union structural funds. We're eligible for the next round, which, you know, it's good for our projects, not so good really for the region. Um, but uh, I think we can, we can do good things with the money that's coming our way. This is a map of Wales. Uh, the yellow part is the convergence region, so for our current project, our students, our company and our university have to sit within this yellow area. Um, we've negotiated hard with our funders, so for our successor project, that will embrace all of Wales, so the whole of Wales. And also, uh, we've managed to get agreement that company partners can be outside of Wales. Because for me, this is a huge investment for us to swim around in quite a small pool. 
and I think it's important for our doctoral candidates to be able to travel outside. So through the EIDS, we're making partnerships outside of Wales, and we can demonstrate the benefits of that. Three core components of our CAS scholarships, that it's a collaborative project with a company partner, it's a research project, so they, they have to achieve a doctorate within their university, and there's also the Postgraduate Skills Development Award that has to be completed. Because MINI is 12 months plus, it's funded 12 months, plus an additional three months for uh, writing up. And the maxi, the doctoral, that's 36 months. So it's a three year funded period and six months in addition to that with no funding for writing up. The timings are tight for our doctoral candidates. Um, if we have a look at the uh, bursaries, you can see underneath I've put the amount of bursary that our students receive when they're awarded scholarships, and I think they're pretty reasonable bursaries, actually. So we've not had any problem recruiting um, doctoral candidates for these projects at all. In fact, we've got more demand than we can meet. To draw down our 60% ESF grant um, for the project, we have to provide university match, that's supervisory time and overheads, and our companies also have to put in uh, cash or in kind, cash and in kind. So everybody on the project has to fill in a timesheet every month and it's signed and all of those things. So we're looking at how we can reduce some of that bureaucracy going forward. These are the, the figures. We set a budget where the students get a monthly stipend, but they also get money for travel and conference for equipment and consumables, for skills development and training. And I think in a sense, you know, I can talk a lot about doctoral training, but unless there's a budget, it's very hard to deliver, it, to deliver something that's, that's valued. So these students are in an enviable, enviable position of having quite a lot of freedom, an awful lot of support, but also a budget to enable them to do what they want to do. The lowest uh, budget line is for the academic. <laughs> That's uh, uh, quite a small amount for academics to travel to and from companies and things like that. Um, I designed the Postgraduate Skills Development Award part of this, um, and it's, it's about um, doing a compulsory KESS grad school. Uh, we take them away, it's a residential three-day event, and I think that training outside of the research environment is uh, far more effective than if you're trying to train doctoral candidates within their research environment. We have these CAS credits, which can be acquired through CPD training, through research methodology training, through conference workshops. Uh, really, it's customised to suit the needs of the individual doctoral candidate. We have a huge emphasis on business awareness and business engagement and that kind of training because that's, to be honest, that's not really provided anywhere else in our university for our doctoral students. Um, we're also finding some spin-off benefits in that suddenly we're operating as Wales. All nine universities are suddenly collaborating on delivering doctoral training, which is something that's never happened before. And of course we need to have a framework to map what we're doing, so we're mapping onto the VTI RDF, Research Development Framework, but we're also mapping onto the ECTS, the European Credit Transfer. Because we want to encourage mobility, um, our students, they need to have a kind of common currency for, that for future employers. So this project has really allowed us to pioneer new approaches to um, doctoral skills training, particularly. Some of the benefits to the company, it's low cost, it's applicable applied research, it's long-term um, collaboration with the university, much value to our local companies, 
developing a research culture within their company, publicity and PR value, uh, I don't think we should underestimate that. And also the credibility of working with a university for many of our SMEs, um, that's a key factor. For us as a university, when I showed you the picture at the beginning, I told you we were founded by the local slate workers. So links with local business and local community are really important to us. So as a university, we need to bring them in and we need to give something back. So those links are, are really strong through projects like this. Uh, building research capacity and also uh, the last, what, last bullet point there, as a, a test bed for new working practices. So we're monitoring things like submission deadlines and skills training. Because we've got a 36 month doctoral program across the rest of our university, so non care students, it's a four year uh, program for doctoral candidates. We're saying, well, suddenly we're going to ask three and a half is it doable? And if it's doable, what's better? So there was lots of kind of pilot projects coming through for the university. For the student, of course, fully funded scholarships. Uh, not to be sneezed at nowadays, uh, there are not very many opportunities around and the future looks a bit bleak. It's a tax free bursary as well, um, so many of them uh, don't have to work whilst they're also trying to do a doctorate, so they can concentrate just on doing that. It has the skills training um, and the students come out with a transcript. <coughs> so they come out with their doctoral thesis and a full transcript of all the skills that they've acquired en route. And employers value that transcript without, without doubt. Many of them are employed with their partner company. Uh, at the moment, the completers um, is quite low, but 75% of those completers have been offered employment by the company partner. Not all of it full-time employment, but nevertheless, it's important. And of course, we have a nice community, uh, a North Wales community that we're building. Um, this picture is one of our Kess grad schools in uh, Snowdonia National Park. This is North Wales, very typical landscape, mountains, lakes. It's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> I think you know, there's a couple of people in this picture you might recognise, um, far left and far right. <laughs> I'll we'll come back to that. This is another of our Kess grad schools in uh, Mid Wales. This is a residential um, Kess grad school at Regnar. Uh, we have beautiful venues for doing these kinds of things, but I think you get the better, that you get more out of students if you treat them uh, in this kind of way. Um, If I look a little bit about KESS 2, as I said, we're working on a successor project. We've learned an awful lot in, in um, four and a half years now. So, in the next round of structural funding um, across Wales, we're looking at a whole Wales project. We're looking at um, larger companies, but also multinationals. So, We've got agreement that we can work with European companies, but also that we can work with international companies. And for me, that's fantastic. That's a really, really good opportunity. So we've got um, financing to send our care scholars out to international uh, companies, and they will bring expertise and experience and knowledge back with them. We're looking at extending company placements. At the moment, it's a minimum of one month per year with the company, you want more. We're looking at the IP issues, uh, we're looking at part-time provision for the research masters courses, and we're looking at synergies with other um, ESF projects. So things like training, there are clear synergies that, that would be beneficial to address. Um, also a complementary transnational element um, with through Horizon 2020. I mean, that's something that we're exploring through uh, EIDS. And the transnational element has just been fantastic in HES. Um, I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute, but definitely something that we want to take forward. 
And then we're looking at co-fund applications, for, perhaps for some postdoc opportunities, because we're producing 400 doctoral candidates across Wales. If we could give some of them postdoc opportunities, be it in Wales or outside, that would kind of make sense. And uh, they, the others would then have uh, aspirational uh, examples to look at. And of course, um, to embed our future successor project within the EIDS. So a little bit now about the EIDS and CARES. So uh, as I said, CARES embraces all nine um, Welsh universities. Um, the attraction of the EIDS, so our partnership, is the possibility to enhance opportunities for mobility and exchanges for doctoral candidates working with external partners. So we have a kind of common thread that runs through what we all do. Um, mobility is something that we should be encouraging. Mobility is something that our students really want and really value and appreciate. Um, just a few weeks ago, you had a visitor here uh, from Danny, he's one of our KESS PhD scholars from South Wales. He wanted to come and have a look, he's looking at postdoc opportunities, he's thinking, well, I need to think about my career development, where can I go next? I've got a little bit of KESS money, he said to me, can I go and shadow some postdocs in other universities? And I thought, yes, that's a brilliant idea. So just encouraging students to kind of break outside their familiar box and go and see how other people do things. And uh, when you start to do that, you tend to, you know, <laughs> synchronicity starts to happen. You start to meet people that you click with. Networking opportunities start to arise. So we're looking really at setting up some collaborative projects, more collaborative projects. Uh, Collaborative projects where research is used for the benefit of society, but also at the same time delivering the skills needed for Europe's knowledge economy and innovation union. That sounds, that sounds like a grand thing to be writing on a project proposal, but that's real. We can achieve that if we focus ourselves now. For us in Wales, the EIDS has been an important platform for all of the Welsh universities, that's 10 of us, to launch a transnational element. We focused on the skills training, the training um, aspect of what we do, but I think that's just the beginning. <laughs> Other things are going to come from this. To have training programmes linked with industrial partners, um, makes perfect sense for me. In the UK, we're told again and again that from our doctoral candidates, only 30% of them will go into academia. Well, we can't ignore the other 70%, because where are they going to go? And are we providing them with the skills they need to uh, get the jobs outside of academia? So this is something that I think we have a responsibility to address. Um, it, it was me being me, I, I thought, well, for our KESS project, we have, a, we have an underspend. Uh, ESF projects, you know, spending is complicated because there's huge paperwork for spending, you know, a few pounds. So uh, we had an underspend. I'd met um, Bent and Nele, and we talked about possibilities. So I thought, well, I'll just put a proposal to them to look at a transnational element. So the Welsh European Funding Office, um, I put a proposal in to talk about um, doing some work uh, with these guys across Europe. I didn't think for a minute that they were going to accept it, <laughs> but they said yes. <laughs> so actually, we do have a little bit of money to um, think about taking our students out, but also inviting your students in. And those exchanges, um, we have to value them. And it's a rare opportunity. We can see the benefits for everyone concerned. And this 
cross-fertilization that's happening um, between all of our universities through the platform which is the EIDS is, is something very, very special. Certainly I, I value it hugely. We, we can therefore harmonize our approaches um, as universities in Europe and we can share and develop best practice. So we're not working in isolation, we're working on a much broader platform. Wales itself has a lot to gain from this pioneering approach. Wales is a small region in the UK. You know, um, the funding regime that we have means that we're pumping money in to economically regenerate the area. But we can't do that by ourselves. It makes perfect sense to be liaising with people beyond Wales to achieve that. We've looked at um, mapping excellence across the EIDS partners. <clears throat> so looking at, well, what are the disciplines of our research excellence within each of the universities, and then mapping where, where the, the matches are. So when um, certainly our Kess scholars come to publish in May, we can link them up with the, um, the schools or discipline areas within the university, and they can start to to make connections straight away. That's very valuable because to do that by yourself as a doctoral candidate, um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So we can uh, help people along. And that's not only academia though, that's also industrial mapping and industrial partners. Um, and having a database of that, I think something that's not been done um, and we could achieve a lot through pulling that together. I talked a little bit about postdoc opportunities. Uh, we've seen a few come through. One of our KISS scholars uh, that met Bengt um, in Bangor um, found a postdoc opportunity through uh, Bengt's University in Umeå. And I think these things will arise. Uh, but we have to be realistic. Is it sustainable? So we need a sustainable EIDS model. Um, we need to work together to look at future opportunities and to pull together our funding to achieve something amazing. So EIDS certainly will be embedded in a CAS successor project. In terms of what we've done so far between EIDS and CAS, we've done presentations, uh, Doc Careers 2 project, which Bank talked about at the EUA, it was in Brussels. We did an uh, EUA Doctoral Week conference in Stockholm, and re fairly recently I was invited, well, Monica as well, and uh, one of Hamilton's team were in Vilnius in Lithuania. For training, we're looking at yearly residential workshops with doctoral candidates to enhance that, the candidate's ability to act in the European arena as a researcher and to promote collaboration over both national and research borders and to foster a new breed of industrial doctoral candidates. This is what we've done so far, training in Bangor. As I said, these are some students from Romeo um, in Bangor doing a, a residential programme and then Last year, we took some students to Sweden. Uh, so this was a mix of um, CARES participants from some of the Welsh universities, Umeå, um, Pardubica. So next, we're coming here, <laughs> which is really exciting. So we were meeting this morning, uh, talking about who's coming and how that's going to work. Um, this is our website, do have a look at it, it's got lots of case studies and uh, interesting things about the case project. Uh, that's my email and my phone, so do contact me if you have any uh, queries or anything I can help you. And if you